You can easily access the channel EQ by clicking on the E in the inspector. It is probably the one EQ you're going to use the most often because it's simple and has most of the functions you'll need right away. It has four frequency bands with individual curves available and there's also a pre-filter to quickly high pass or low pass your audio. The Studio EQ is very similar to the Channel Strip EQ. It also offers four bands but does not have an extra pre-filter. So why should you use this plugin if it does offer more or less the same options as the channel EQ? The main advantage is that you can load multiple instances on one channel if you run out of frequency bands. Another reason could be that you need an equalizer at a specific place in your signal chain. The insert effects section is usually the place where most of the signal processing happens. The channel strip EQ comes after this. So if you need an EQ before the channel strip, you can use the Studio EQ plugin in your signal chain. Frequency 2 is the most versatile Cubase EQ, as it has 8 bands in total and also offers dynamic control. Use the listen mode if you only want to hear the sound within a specific frequency band. This enables you to scan through your spectrum. There are also more options for the behavior of the bands available. For example, a very steep 96 dB per octave setting for your high and low pass filter. Switch to single view for dynamic control. This enables you to route other tracks into the plugin for dynamic behavior. For example, you can sidechain a kick into a bass track. So every time the kick plays, the bass makes some room so the kick comes through more clearly. In this example, I use the dual view mode of the channel EQ to determine the most dominant frequency area of the kick. Then I set up a single frequency band to duck away the bass in frequency 2 in the dominant spectrum area of the kick, like this. This technique increases the punch of the kick and can help you clean up the low end of your mix. The M5 and P1A EQs are a bit special and offer some unique EQ curves. They are called Pultec EQs. To see what they're doing, you can use a frequency analyzer plugin like the Bertom EQ Curve Analyzer 2. Even though you should mix with your ears and not with your eyes, getting some sort of visual feedback is good if you're just starting to use these plugins. We can see that without touching any knobs, we already get a slight boost in the upper frequency area caused by the P1A. The M5 plugin focuses more on the control of the mid-range frequencies. The P1A is more for the low and top end frequencies. People often use this plugin on kicks by simultaneously boosting and attenuating the low end, enhancing the bass without making it sound too muddy. Use headphones or speakers to hear the effect. The GEQ10 and 30 are equalizers with fixed frequency bands. The GEQ10 has 10 and the GEQ30 has 30 bands. The bandwidth of the 10 is much broader than the one of the 30 because fewer bands need to cover the same frequency spectrum. They also offer a range of modes that result in different curve characteristics. The DJ EQ is a very simple plugin with fixed bands. If you are a DJ and you like the EQ behavior of your deck, this plugin is for you. While measuring it, I was a bit irritated by the frequency curve of the mid-range. The plugin shows a broad boost from 100 to 10,000 Hz, while the curve analyzer shows a bit more of a narrow behavior. Keep that in mind when using this plugin. I've got two instruments of a similar character, but with a different sound. One instrument sounds bright and clear, while the other one sounds more muffled and muddy. With the plugin Voxengo Curve EQ, you can make both instruments sound more alike by matching their EQ curves. 
Load the plugin on one of the instruments and open the static and match window and increase the average time by clicking on the gear symbol. Press play and assign the EQ curve to one of the tracks in the static spectrums editor, as shown in the video. Now copy the plugin over to the other instrument and repeat the process. Press play and assign the other EQ curve of the muffled instrument to another track in the static spectrums editor. For the most detailed result, increase the number of points to 60. Now tell the plugin which assigned EQ curve is the reference and which EQ curve belongs to the target instrument. Then click on Match Spectrums. As you can see, the plugin suggested this curve, which can also be modified later. Let's check out what it sounds like before and after and if it really matches the reference instrument. I would say it did a great job. Both instruments together sound bright because the muddy mid-frequencies of the muffled strings have been filtered out by the plugin.